Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles, where we have something pretty damn impressive for you today. Oop, I'm in the trouble now. I, that is damn swearing, because I know you're not supposed to swear in the first 30 seconds of a YouTube video. Whatever. Well, too late now, I've done it. Anyway, whatever. Today we're going to be riding along with Nertaku here, who is in the German Tier 6 light tank, the VK2801, in a Tier 7 battle on the Studzianki map, or however the hell you pronounce the name of this place. Is it Polish? I think it's supposed to be Polish. It does kind of look Polish. Sort of Central European plain. Anyway. Yes, that's right, he is in a light tank. Yes, he is playing World of Tanks in hard mode. Fortunately, there are no armoured cars in this battle, so he does actually stand a reasonable chance of being able to do some spotting and scouting in the way that light tanks were always supposed to. Now then, the VK2801. A lot of people have very fond memories of this machine. Not so much the current machine, because this tank used to get a 105mm howitzer derp gun, and it was monstrous fun to play. Clearly it was too much fun to play, and Wargaming hadn't yet gotten around to introducing armoured cars in order to ruin the fun for all of the light tank drivers, so while they were waiting they just removed the 105mm howitzer from this thing. I often hear people saying, oh, I wish this tank still had the 105 mm howitzer. And, I mean, I appreciate where you're coming from, but you probably don't really wish this thing still had the 105 mm howitzer. You wish it had the howitzer that it had back when this thing had a howitzer, but there's been a high explosive nerf since then, so you probably really don't want a howitzer on this tank anymore. Instead, you've got a choice of the 50 mm or the 75 mm that Nertiku is currently using. Oh, by the way, just for a quick laugh. See the T20 there? See how small the T20 is compared to this thing? This is a light tank. The T20 is supposed to be a medium. <laughs> and that thing can pack a 90mm gun. How? <laughs> Where does it put it? <laughs> yeah. Actually, speaking of unlikely configurations, the 50mm gun that you get on this thing is exactly the same gun that you get on the Panzer 3J medium tank. And yet, when you put the same gun on this, it gets 40 millimeters more penetration with standard armor-piercing ammunition. And the 75 millimeter gun on this, which is the one that uh, Nertaku is using, is the exact same gun that you also get on the Panzer 4H. And yet the same gun on this thing gets 30 millimeters more penetration firing armor-piercing ammunition. But I suppose it doesn't really matter because this machine has the wrong guns in game anyway. It was never designed to be fitted with 50mm gun and the 75mm gun that it does have is the wrong 75mm gun. Oh, hello. It's the boogie. Yes, this was supposed to have the KWK-40 L43 75mm gun. Instead, it has the KWK-40 L48L. I realise that's all a bit of a mouthful, but the only thing you really need to remember is wrong gun. It's got the wrong turret too. Well, actually, no. It does have the G model turret from the Panzer 4H. And that is the turret that this machine was supposed to have. With the differences being... Oof. Artillery's got him zeroed in there, hasn't it? With the differences being that this turret doesn't have the side skirts that the same turret on the Panzer 4H has. The other difference is this exact same turret has 340 meters of view range on the Panzer IV H and 360 meters of view range here on the VK2801. Why? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Better optics, I suppose. I don't know. I'm guessing. That's not the only liberty they've taken with the design of this tank. Notice him skipping and weaving through the trees there. By the way, he knows artillery's looking for him. He doesn't want to announce his position by knocking trees over. But yes, uh, the engine. The Argus engine is the engine that this tank was supposed to be fitted with, but the Argus engine didn't have no 580 horsepower. <laughs> At 550. But hey, I mean, as long as you're making shit up anyway, who cares, right? Wow, his team are not doing very well, are they? One kill to six. Although they're only 2,000 hit points down, so they are doing some damage. Actually, the 2,000 hit point difference is quite a bit in the tier 7 battle. Yeah, they're not doing that well at all. Although they have managed to pull one kill back, and then just as quickly they lose another tank. 
Now, you might be thinking, well, it's not surprising this team aren't doing well, because if they're anything like him, he's only done 225 damage. Well, yeah, but doing damage isn't his job. I mean, he's going to do damage when he can, when it's safe to do so, but he's a bottom-tier light tank. It's his job to spot targets. It's his team's job to kill them. And he has been spotting them, and he's continuing to spot them. But the number that you should be looking at is the amount of damage that his team have done to targets that he's been spotting. And that's where it gets pathetic. 500. Come on, poke out. Poke out, do it. Somebody kill that guy. Because there is a Yak Panther in the bushes over there. There he is. That's how it's supposed to happen. Of course, how it's supposed to happen and how it actually happens are often two entirely different things in online gaming. And by the looks of things, Nurku is rapidly coming to the conclusion that he's going to have to start shooting things because his team either don't want to or aren't capable. Although, you know, to be fair, they have pulled the kills back. They're only three kills behind now. And there's only about a one and a half thousand hit point difference between the two teams. That we know of. Don't forget that the hit point total displayed at the top of the screen there for the enemy team is when they were last spotted. So they could be lower. But they're probably not. But what it looks like is happening right now is that Nurku is... Well, how can I put this? Since his team had proved to be so disastrously inept at actually shooting the tanks that he's been spotting for them, he's taken matters into his own hands. Unfortunately, he is in a light tank. And while the VK-2801 is pretty well armoured by the standards of light tanks, it's still only pretty well armoured by the standards of light tanks, so he really can't afford to get shot at. I mean, he did bounce a shot from an APCR shell there, but that was when he was pulling back from a ridge. It hit his upper glacis when it was angled back, so that was pretty much an automatic ricochet, but he can't count on that happening every time. So now it looks like he's pretty much trying to use his camo and view range advantage. That's why he's sitting here in the corner of the map, trying to stay at arm's length from any enemies and let his team do the spotting. And he will shoot at the targets that they spot. Because let's face it, he couldn't do a much worse job than them. Actually, you know, I may be being too harsh here. I realise it's fashionable to just moan at your team for being shit, and often that's the case, but, well, there is more than one team in play here, and it's not necessarily the case that his team are terrible. It could just be that the enemy team are good. Yeah, I know, give them praise instead of condemnation. Don't worry, I'm sure it won't catch on. Scored a hit on the KV-2 there. He got taken out, he's trying to pull back. Actually, you know, the team are doing a reasonable job of digging in and fighting back here. But appearances can be deceptive. Don't forget, the enemy team are having to come onto the attack here, and that does put them at a slight disadvantage. And Nerdaku's realised that he really wasn't doing much useful sitting in the corner of the map there. So instead, and again, carefully weaving through the bushes, and not knocking any trees over that he doesn't absolutely have to, he's moving up on the flank here, maybe spot some targets for the SU-8 and maybe get some flanking shots of his own. And there's the T-25. You remember that guy? He was the first enemy tank spotted. Got reduced to 14 health in the first minute of the game. I've been thinking to myself up until this point, that T-25 has done really, really well to stay alive. He's probably a good player who just got really unlucky in the first couple of minutes of the match and then the next time we see him, he's sitting in the middle of an open field in front of a whole bunch of hidden tanks on 14 hit points. <laughs> and no, now the reason he stayed alive this long is that he's basically been hiding for the last seven or eight minutes. He was not quite as good as we may have been given him credit for. Takes out the Super Hellcat, he did get spotted of course. Moves up, gets in cover. Nice. There's only three of them left. Artillery have gotten zeroed in again. But there are a lot of very low health enemy tanks about. There's only two of them left, him and the Yag Panther. And the Yag Panther's sitting there on three kills. And I don't know how much damage the Yag Panther's done, but, well, you know, clearly it's more than nothing. The thing is, at this stage in the battle, it's easy to look good on the scoreboard if you've been sitting at the back of the map the entire game and you've only just started to clear up kills on low health tanks. So we'll see how the Yag Panther did at the end of the battle. Meanwhile, Nurku demonstrating how you will always win in a well-played light tank 
against an SU-152 if you're able to pick and choose the terms of the engagement because that thing, while it has a very powerful gun, has terrible view range. Now he obviously knows he's getting shot at and as he's pulling back, he's angling at 45 degrees. And while he was angled at 45 degrees at this kind of range, most of Nerdaku's 75mm shells were bouncing. But it looked like the SU-152 may have panicked, understandable under the circumstances, and then he turned to be able to reverse faster, presenting the not quite as well angled front of his machine to Nerdaku's 75mm gun. And again, I mean, you know, it's easy to point the finger at the SU-152 and say, oh, you idiot, why didn't you stay angled? You might have survived. But, well... He was in a tough spot, and it's not so much that the SU-152 was bad, it's just that Nerdaku is good. He was demonstrating some textbook use of view range, cover and concealment there, and he's going to need to be good because he's now the last one left alive on his team against four enemies. So, Nerdaku, how lucky are you feeling today? Luck is overrated though. It's my experience that winners make their own luck. One other thing that I haven't actually mentioned about the VK2801 is that it's actually surprisingly good at ramming. Which may seem weird because it's a light tank, but by the standards of light tanks, it's pretty heavy because it's reasonably well armoured. Oh, hello. Oh, he spotted one of the, uh, is that the M44? Yeah. I oh, was harassing him earlier. I oh, would have been the dish best served cold. Oh, second shot absorbed by the tracks because of course it was, but he's only delaying the inevitable. Three shots and he's dead. And there it is. And somebody, and it's probably going to be the T-34A5M, although it could be the VK, somebody's capping his base. There's only one of them in there, which means it probably is the T-34. And that's a smart move, because, I mean, Nerdaku did not get spotted the whole time he was shooting up that M44 because artillery tends to have, you know, with some notable and extremely stupid exceptions, even worse view range than Russian tank destroyers. But if you don't know exactly where the light tank is, make him come to you by sitting in his tank circle. Just make sure that you're not sitting in the open in the cap circle and you do have some form of concealment Otherwise, that can happen. Oh, that was a hell of a shot. So, I'm willing to bet substantial amounts of money that that VK and SU-8 are sweating bullets around about now. <laughs> of course, he has no idea where either of them are. I mean, you can see the VK's last reported position on the minimap, but that was ages ago. He could be anywhere by now. If the VK was the kind of player who was capable of thinking and breathing at the same time, you'd imagine that he would have been... Well, he wasn't in the cap circle at the same time as the T-3485M, but you'd imagine he would have been in the bushes overlooking the cap circle, ready to support it. And it looks like Nerdaku is working off that assumption, working his way, because he's got all the time in the world now. Well, he's got a couple of minutes, but there's no longer a capture timer forcing his hand. And it looks like he's working off that assumption and working his way around to try to deliver a dose of surprise butt sex to the VK if he was camping the bushes around the camp circle because that's what a decent player would probably have been doing the thing is have you ever heard the expression professionals are predictable it's the amateurs you have to watch out for <laughs> two minutes to go that's because if somebody's applying logic and common sense you can often predict where they're going to be it's the people who have no idea what they're doing that you have to watch out for. There's the SU-8. Ooh, the house spotted him. But the house that the SU-8 is hiding behind is nowhere near as impervious to one piece of shells as the SU-8 had hoped it was. And, oh look, shot came from the bushes at the back of the cat circle. The VK is using logic and common sense. One that will never cease. He does need to kill that SU-8 though. And from this angle he can do it without exposing himself to flanking fire from the VK. More importantly, well, a couple of things. One, there's a minute and 15 seconds of this game left, which doesn't leave him a lot of time to be sneaky, but it's gonna leave him maybe just enough. Also, if you look at the hit point counter at the top of the screen, that VK only has 46 health left. Now remember, that's the amount of hit points that the VK had when he was last spotted, but it doesn't really matter because even if he does have less than that, he's a one-shot kill either way. 
Nodoku's problem here is that he needs to be close enough to the VK to spot him through cover when the VK fires. And he did get spotted there, and the VK did not take the bait. But he did see Nertaku heading in this direction. Then again, Nertaku has enough health remaining to be able to take a hit, and the VK doesn't. But there's no sense in being sloppy. Especially when you can get the one-shot kill off without even being seen. <laughs> Simply by using concealment. Like somebody who's capable of thinking and breathing at the same time. Nerdku in the German tier 6 light tank, the VK2801, with an ace tanker, an Orlix medal, a Pascucci's medal, a Radley Walters medal, a top gun, and eight kills, earning more than double the base experience of the next best player on his team, who was also a light tank, a type 64, who did very little damage of his own, but still came second on experience earned, which means he must have been the one hoovering up all of the spotting experience. That might explain why Nerdku wasn't getting everybody. Everybody was shooting up the targets that the Type 64 was spotting. And the Yag Panther doing a creditable 2,500 damage and finishing third. But that's it for today. Sadly, Nerdaku has to go and lie down for a few hours and rest his back after that game. But I'm sure he'll be back at some point, and I hope you all enjoyed it, because that's it for today. As always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.